Welcome to Zcast, everybody. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here on site at the RSA uh, 2023 conference at the Moscone in San Francisco. I'm here today with Javier Rodriguez from Zscaler, your director of product management. Uh, uh, why don't you say hi, everybody? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so three years working for Zscaler since day zero with CDX, and I'm dedicated to CDX, yeah. having a lot of fun. And CDX, of course, is your digital experience platform. Yes. Right? And uh, uh, and first of all, you know, we're here at RSA, you excited about this? You're a great show, how's, how's the traffic been? Yeah, it's a lot of people, I'm happy to see, you know, people responding after the, the freeze from COVID, and yeah. uh, a lot of uh, new cool technologies. Yeah, well, there's a lot of people here, so. <laughs> so, so. So we're gonna be talking about digital experience, right, which is your product. Uh, and it, it's interesting, you, you've been, You've been selling now a couple of years, yeah. right? And but when I think of Zscaler, right? And you had some Manhattan enhancements in our last November. But when most people think of Zscaler, they think of you as a cloud security company, right? So what the heck are you doing with the digital experience platform? Why does that make sense? It's a great question that I also thought myself before joining, right? And and uh, I usually talk about first you need to protect yourself, be secure, right? Once you are secure, you're comfortable. Then you start thinking about the experience of the users. Is it better than before? Is it faster, maybe slower? So you want to understand, and then obviously have a tool that helps you very quickly troubleshoot and fix things. So that's why user experience is important. Everybody wants things fast and the microsecond, and CDX is, is designed for helping in that direction. Okay, so I can accept the fact that people want to understand experiences, but there's a lot of digital experience platforms on the market, right? Again, you guys have been a security company. What are the unique things that you can do that fill some gaps in the industry? It's a great question, right? So, uh, from day zero, we designed it to be end-to-end. -end. We wanted to understand close to the user, and uh, we can leverage our agent. So that's one of the advantages that you use the same agent, and we designed it so that it's still low on CPU. We get the perspective closest to the user, but we have the data centers on the internet, so we have very nice observability of the internet also, and we API, so we get all the intelligence. And then, um, Another benefit is that uh, we have a lot of a lot of agents now or users yes. using CDX, you know, close to 30 million, and that's a lot of big data that helps us find things. For example, there was a fiber cut in Europe, and uh, just affecting some of the applications. And because we had so many uh, endpoints, we could find enough signals to detect. So I guess the easy thing to think is, as a security company, you got to look at every packet, anyways. So now you're, instead of looking at it from a security perspective, you're just looking at it from a performance perspective. Yes, yeah. and, and you can also use the performance as an indication. That That's true. A security if something's not performing right, there could be a security incident. Exactly, there. somebody's yeah. sending a lot of yeah. data out, it's going to affect the speed, and yeah. you could use that as an additional signal for yeah. security. So you guys are a public rated company, and so I listen to your earnings call all the time. I know some of the commentary from Jay was that, your, your CEO, was that uh, this is actually your fastest growing segment now. So I'm not asking for any numbers, hard numbers, other than to say it's your fastest growing segment. But well, why do you think that is? You know, given it's a relatively new product, you guys are so well established, you know, in SSE, how has this become your fastest growing product? So I'm lucky, right, and I'm blessed. I'm, we're working with amazing engineers. We get things done fast, and we work hard, but I think, uh, you know, we have a lot of customers, and the customers are really interested in what's going on. And when you do things like zero trust, it's really hard to troubleshoot because, by definition, there is no vector of attack. Hence, how can you troubleshoot? So that helps us there. And then, uh, you know, the, the cloud movement and COVID, everybody is interested in. Okay, I was happy in the office. Now I'm not. Is it worse? And then that that closes gaps that customers have. So I think it's a combination of the need of visibility, understanding the performance. As I said, right, but once I'm secure, I start thinking, okay, is this, like, zero trust is better than a VPN? You need some quantitative data. And that helps us position CDX. Yeah, and it's, so it's interesting that uh, in this year's uh, Magic Quadrant, which, again, you guys were a leader in, uh, Gardner actually called out experience management as part of their uh, SSE framework. Right. So, you know, I, I was a little skeptical at first that it should actually be part of SSE, but it looks like, uh, you know, other analysts seem to agree. So, uh, you know, good for you guys there. Well, I mean, if, if you, you provide security, it's perfect from security angle, but if the users are not happy with the technology, because whatever, it's super slow, yeah. they're not going to be happy. So you need to find, you know, measurements in order to prove or even optimize the infrastructure and make it happen. So I think it's a good angle, you know. The, the key is the security. Once you are protected, then you start worrying about the experience and then you, you should close the gap to have a good platform. So I know there's two versions, right? There's an advanced and a standard version. Uh, can you tell me what's in, 
standard and then why would a customer want to upgrade to advanced? Yeah, and in fact, we released a new SKU, so there is three versions now. Oh, there is, okay. Yeah. Um, so the standard was, you know, we wanted to include in the, what is CDX for users, uh, a version, minimal version, to understand a little bit of the performance and be able to pinpoint where things could be very fast, reducing a little bit NPR. Um, now, on the advanced, we added a lot of features, like uh, faster, um, more resolution, uh, more alerts, more applications, and a lot of the AI comes there, um, so that you can find things faster and you can get to monitor what you really need. The, the standard was six, six pros. Um, we added a lot more. And then in the Advanced Plus, what we are uh, doing is everything that becomes huge amount of data that we didn't collect before, for example, process, for process analytics, we're going to have something every 20 seconds, we're going to go to 10 seconds, oh. all the CPU consumption, it's huge amount of data. So we are adding that into the Advanced Plus to control a little bit of the, of the cost, and we're adding even more applications, and the complex AI that needs a lot of new compute to understand what's going on is also going to put there. So that's basically the, the main difference. Um, um, the standard gives you enough to understand what's going on, pinpoint what the problem could be, and then if you want fast resolution using AI, it's going to be on the other SKUs. Okay, well that makes sense. Now, one of the interesting things about ZDX is that uh, you think of it as a tool for IT operations, uh, but in fact it's used a lot by security operations. You, yes. You talked about it a little bit. Can you actually double click on that and talk about some of the use cases for IT ops, but then also for security ops? Right, it's a great question, right? And we also learned through the years. Initially, it was the, the CSKLA champion, security operations, and then uh, usually when things don't work, they get blamed, so they needed a tool to quickly understand what was going on. So it became appealing to the network operations. Some of the things we do is find the network paths. Sure, sure. So that's, that's useful. And that's an that. obvious use case. Right? Exactly, yeah. 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 And then uh, for the help desk, right? So we monitor the application, the network, including the CSCaler or the Wi-Fi if you consider part of the network and the endpoint. So for the help desk, the, the, the call comes and they need to pinpoint when it is very fast. So we also found that you know it, it's really useful for those type of personas and we are you know adding more features in the product to make it easier and more relevant for them. So uh, we discovered that persona path and we are now also as part of the development process you know making it easier for the different personas. But it was historically this was the way. And uh, the use cases are different, right? We still have our main three use cases, which is a hybrid workplace. I work from the office, from a startup, on, on, on from home. I want to keep the same visibility and, and performance. The second one is uh, monitoring collaboration tools like Zoom, Teams, that exploded during COVID. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that in the past. Uh, that's the second use case. And the third use case that is very popular is on zero trust. Uh, right. where I can see what's going on and quickly pinpoint if the problem is in the Wi-Fi of the user or maybe it's on my internet connection, yeah. things like that. Yeah, that makes sense. Actually, I want to follow up on the on the Zoom partnership. In fact, uh, last year you announced UCAS monitoring specifically. Yes. So can you talk about that and why why you call that as a separate product? Well, it's it's uh, it's included in, in CDX Advance and yeah. Advance Plus. Uh, we integrate through API with them to get additional signals. So. We get a lot of signals from the network, from the endpoint, and from the application. But these SaaS applications, you cannot instrument anything in the cloud. So what we do is we get additional signals, in this case, jitter, latency loss, etc., And we bind all the data together so you can do end-to-end -end analysis. And when the, the, the Zoom client says the problem is on the network, you can drill down in CDS to find that. So we added that, and it's one of the most popular use cases. And we're doing a lot of development uh, by Send It Live, we're going to have a very cool feature uh, that understands even better Zoom. Um, we are uh, releasing, we announced the QSS integration so that we don't have any rate limiting issues for the customers. So we're doing a lot of development with them, and it's one of the most popular apps after Microsoft Teams. For sure. Obviously, yeah, yeah. And then uh, you had mentioned the zero trust monitoring. Yes. Can you talk a little bit more how that how that works? Because that's, that's interesting. Everyone loves zero trust today, but why do we need to monitor it? Well, it, it's... You know, if you do a trace route, I was a network engineer from the client, assuming you have connectivity to the app because you are part of the zero trust world, you see one hop into the app connector in our case, and then the customer data center. If the performance is bad, it's most likely in that first hop, which 
you know, includes your Wi-Fi or your internet connection. It comes to our cloud. So it's really hard and there is so many elements in the middle that unless you can see what's going on, it's going to be very hard to, to do troubleshooting. You have to call CSKL support because we have the one in the cloud. So we've spent a lot of time with engineering, understanding the scale, understanding the implication of running these millions of data points from, from the users, if it's going to affect the cloud. So we came up with a nice design where same methodology for troubleshooting. So people that learn CDX, they do the same thing. And we, what we did is incorporate new intelligence in the agent so that we can API to the cloud, to the CPA the cloud, um, and then those elements talk between them, generate the metrics, we bind everything together, encrypt it so the client never exposes any data, and then from the cloud we have all the visibility and the metrics. And now we're also working on adding additional modules on the AI to pinpoint even to the modules of the, of the CPA world. Oh, that's interesting. So you're actually using Zero Trust not as an authentication mechanism, but also as a, almost as a modern security monitoring tool. Yeah, it could yeah, be. Yeah. So we have a feature we call deep tracing where yeah. you can configure the application, you can send additional telemetry. You could even check policy using that yeah. and based on the responses. Yeah. Well, thanks for the update on ZDX. There's one last question for you. Um, you guys have rolled out a lot of stuff with that product. What, what's coming next? What should, what should your customers expect to see? So we're launching now a lot of features, right? We, we work uh, producing a lot of features. Uh, the customers like it and they give us a lot of feedback and it's, it's, it's really good to you know go in the right direction. So. In terms of deployments, right? A lot of customers still have other proxies, uh, blue codes, etc. Yeah. So they service chain to us, and they wanted to have the same monitoring and understanding the problem where is it, where it is. So we are in third-party proxy support uh, and many complex deployments like destination NAT, etc. So we invested a lot there. Um, we are doing a lot of things on the AI to make it easier. Um, AI, that's good. Cool. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, because we have the data, right? And, and you, yes. you said it before, you, when you have a lot of data, it's easy for the machine, it's very hard for the humans. And uh, Professor Andrew Yang also said, just add more data, the, the AI system is going to perform better. So luckily we have the data. Yeah. So we're adding now the AI to make it easy for the admins. So we're doing a comparison mode, like difference game, very easy, okay, the performance is bad now, it was good before, compare and tell me what changed, what's difference, instead of looking at multiple monitors. So we're doing that, um, we're adding a, a dashboard or to detect incidents. The customers care about the big picture. So we're looking at multiple things like Wi-Fi problems, ISP problems, etc. cetera, scaler also. Um, so that's another big uh, area of development. Um, we're adding support for WebEx, which was oh. the top three popular. Yeah. You so that'll give you Teams, Zoom, and WebEx. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in the integration, right? Yeah. You can configure anything. We can still apply the, the general visibility, but once we integrate, we get additional signals, and it's easier to troubleshoot. So that's another one we're adding. Um, we are leveraging um, what we announced last year as ISP insights, so we understand the performance of the internet. Right, right. Focus on the last mile. So you can actually tell which insights or which ISPs perform better than others. Yes. That customers are going to use that to help them make better decisions too, right? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. and that's part of the insights that we're yeah. adding. And uh, you know, a lot of capabilities for the endpoint monitoring, as I said before, the process level monitoring and, and insights. So we're you know investing a lot in what the customers really want and trying to prioritize what really matters because we get a lot of things. So. Right. A lot of exciting things in Sunny Life also, so hopefully customers come and see us. And see us. All right, Abby, well, thank you very much for joining me. I'm Zia Skerala from ZK Research. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and uh, have a great rest of the show and uh, don't get lost amongst all these people. Thank you. So, see you next time on another ZCast.